between the years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the gleaming cities and the years of the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of when shining kingdoms lay spread across the world like blue mantles beneath the stars. Welcome to Antiquity X. I'm your host, Dr. Judd Burton. And here at Antiquity X, we ask strange questions about our strange past. And today, I would like to thank all of you who are listening. Please click a like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And we pick up, in many ways, where we left off with a question related to our last subject, Nimrod. And today we're asking, after the death of Nimrod, is there a further connection with Esau, the individual who was responsible for his dispatchment? Now, again, in our last episode, we took a close look at Nimrod, the person of Nimrod, a a character sketch of Nimrod, and both from the biblical source material and the apocryphal or non-canonical material, we get a picture of an individual who was very Luciferian in many ways. He was the first Antichrist uh, and led the revolution, the rebellion. Uh, Consequently, that's what his name means, uh, at Babel. And if we're to believe Jasher, uh, he met his end at the hands of Esau, brother of Jacob, son of the patriarch Isaac. And that in and of itself is an interesting story uh, because it, it puts the line of Abraham against Nimrod. But we'll come back to the death of Nimrod at the hands of Esau. We actually have to go back to to journey back to Eden, the garden in the district of Eden, that geographical locale. Now, in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, Captain Spock has a painting hanging in his quarters depicting the expulsion from paradise. And when the young officer asks him why he has it in his quarters, he says that it's to remind him that all things end. And that's certainly true, certainly true of Nimrod, certainly true of everything. Uh, But that's actually where we begin, is at the sort of doorstep of Eden and the expulsion from paradise of Adam and Eve. And of course, by this point, the source material is Genesis chapter 3, which many of you will be familiar with. And this already marks the, um, uh, the fall uh, you, you've had the, uh, the temptation at the hands of the Nakash or Satan. And here we have a depiction of the expulsion from paradise. And you can certainly look the story up yourself. Uh, it's in Genesis chapter 3. But I would draw your attention to verse 21 where it talks about God providing skin garments from animals to clothe Adam and Eve. And these are an interesting set of clothing. Uh, They they will function, as you'll see, as an heirloom of of arcane and utmost significance. Uh, And so here we we depart from the story of of Adam and Eve, but continue uh, with the cherub and his flaming sword at their back uh, into the um, antediluvian world and the world of the antediluvian patriarchs. And these garments pass in an irregular manner from these patriarchs um, all the way from Adam uh, to Noah. And you can read about this in Jasher uh, chapter 7. It sort of undergirds the story that takes place in Genesis. 
And Noah took these garments with him on the ark, and then of course the deluge came. And in the in the wake of the deluge, after uh, Noah and his family depart the ark, his son Ham steals the garments and he gives them to Cush, who then gives them to um, his son Nimrod, and. Um, kind of an interesting footnote to this, of course, is the the curse that Ham's line uh, would retain because of this, and this is a depiction uh, of that sort of thing. And we may actually deal with that that question in another episode of Antiquity X. Um, but the, uh, the the stealing of these garments seems to have have put them on an interesting trajectory. You can read about those in Jasher chapter 7. And we fast forward from the story of these garments, these skins, to the death of Nimrod at the hands of Esau, depicted here as the hunter, uh, seeking a blessing from his father Isaac. Now, again, there is an interesting depiction which we we dealt with in the last episode about the dispatchment of Nimrod, that Nimrod actually died at the hands of Esau while he was on a hunting expedition uh, in a kind of twist of irony. And in fact, you can read uh, in Jasher that Nimrod had actually been observing Esau for quite some time uh, and was jealous of Esau. It doesn't go into a lot of detail. We could speculate about it, but I'd like to steer clear of that. But we do have this the dispatchment of Nimrod at the hands of Esau. And now what happens in the wake of Nimrod's death is very, very intriguing. Esau takes these garments, according to Jasher chapter 27, and returns home. And he's very flustered and very upset by the whole ordeal um, and this is where the story begins to intersect with the canonical story in Genesis Genesis chapter 25 verses 29 through 34 about uh, uh, that that account that all of us are familiar with most of us are familiar with where uh, Esau sells his birthright to Jacob. Now, Genesis doesn't go into a lot of detail about this, but again, if we're to believe the accounts in Apocrypha such as Jasher, then those garments, in fact, were the birthright, and they were a matter of some um, contention between Jacob and his brother Esau. It's interesting that in the Genesis account, um, uh, it says that uh, 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 Esau thought he was going to die, uh, probably because he feared uh, the retribution of, of Nimrod's lackeys, and it also says that he despised his birthright. Uh, come what may, these garments passed to Jacob uh, because he, of course, took them in this exchange uh, for the uh, the the uh, porridge or soup that he offered to Esau. Now, ostensibly, uh, these garments would remain in Jacob's possession. Uh, Genesis twenty seven tells us that uh, Esau was very angry with him, and Jacob escaped to um, Haran, where his relatives lived. Uh, my question is, what happened to the garments at this point? It's, it's very much a, a mind-bending sort of question to ponder. Now, did Jacob retain them? And if so, is it possible that he, he gave them to his favored son, Joseph? Um, that's a possibility. Did he did he weave them into this coat of many colors uh, that we read about in the Genesis account? Um, that's another possibility. 
you know, did his brothers keep the tattered remains of the coat that they smeared with blood before they sold Joseph into captivity? Whatever occurred, it would seem that these garments passed into, uh, at the very least, obscurity and have, have altogether seemed to have disappeared from history like a, a number of treasures and relics from the Bible. And so there are a lot of facets to this story, a lot of facets to the story of Nimrod, but what I think is, is interesting for this episode is to consider uh, the possibilities of, of what happened to these, these rather miraculous and spectacular garments uh, that, that seem to confer upon the bearer uh, not only authority but in some cases supernatural ability because again accounts like Jasher tell us that when Nimrod put them on he gained strength now this this sounds very supernatural very paranormal but what, what is clear uh, even if the garments were a birthright they do seem to have been abused by uh, Nimrod. 